Hello, welcome to Flory Models Kit Review Time. Today we've got something a little bit special. We've got Eddard's 172nd Raiders in the Sky 1944. And obviously this is Hasegawa's uh, B24 Liberator with all the nice bits, all the goodies and some books by the looks of it that Eddard tend to do with these reboxings. Now these reboxings do tend to give you the best kit in scale and I have to say they've done it again because Originally they did another version of this with the Mini Art 172nd Liberator and that's just simply say it's showing its age by a long shot. This is the new tooled obviously uh, and recent release a few years ago now but it's still a gorgeous kit of the Hasegawa Liberator which is now clearly best in its class. Okay, So looking at the box we can see it's a big box, <laughs> a huge box. Beautiful box art. So obviously we've got Liberator here in sort of coastal command colours with the white. Uh, obviously just uh, dropped a bomb on a ship. And as you can see, this thing does have some lumps and bumps, pretty much unique uh, to this particular variant of aircraft. And then as you can see on the side, you do get some very, very nice tackle options with various things with the radar, a little bit of nose art on some of them, so forth and so on right the way through. Okay, so up and ending it, as we can see, we'll keep it on the angle as you can see. Uh, so this one, your kit number is 21. 21 all right so that's the one so it's liberator it's the mark three uh or you've got the uh, gr mark five and obviously coastal command ones as you can see and then round on the other side we've got a little bit about what you can get down in here so we've got hasagawa plastic parts which is quite nice to know it tells you right up front um two unique sprues uh, by eddard total new tooling which obviously upgrade it photo etch uh painting mask cartograph uh printed decals 13 marks down in there. We've got Coastal Command ones as well. We've got an A2 sized uh, box art print, which is really nice touch as well. And we have got a very nice, apparently 76 page book uh, all about the aircraft and various things. So without further ado, let's jump right in and get it out of the box. Okay, so as long as we can get to my knife, we'll be good. There we go. So straight off, you can see it's actually got quite a lot in here so we've got the standard uh plastic clear parts as we've seen with the normal uh one in there and then obviously we've got the kit which is that standard hasagawa kit in there and then we have this so we've got completely new clear parts and we've got new sprues with props uh, and various lumps and bumps antennas guns various things we know which is a very nice touch as well we've got lovely little bit of color photo etch and normal photo etch for the aerial we've got the poster which we know will be just like this a little bit bigger as you can see so again very nicely done as well there we've got this great book which actually is very very nice indeed and we've got our instructions we've got mask set and we've got those all important decals as well okay so if we just move that out of the way so to start with we will have a look just down in here, as you can see. Nice instructions, good quality right the way through. So as you can see, some nice stuff. Taking note probably uh, to make sure that obviously we've got a lot of dupes down in here and things like that, purely because we've got different versions uh, of the Liberator in different sort of guises by uh, Hasegawa. So you just wanna make sure you take notice of the ones you're not using in your parts. We have got some drills to open up and some various things down in here, here as well, depending on which version you're doing in your marking. So again, with these types of kits, have a clear idea which version you're doing and then just pay attention. It's always well worth having a quick skim through and perhaps highlighting some of the points specific to your version of aircraft you're doing that way you don't accidentally open up the wrong hole take a chunk out somewhere that doesn't need to be or forget to open up a hole things like that okay we've all done it okay so down on the interior as you can see you do get full detailed interior we've got the bomb bay uh, we've got the midsection the waist section things like that the waist gunners positions things like that they're all going in there very nice wing spark going to go into it as well all right down in those and then we've got the first bits down on the tail wheel being fitted in as we know we've got the upgraded because we've got the full color uh, photo etch set which is just down in here as you can see, really nice details on those. They're gonna be used quite extensively throughout the cockpit. So we've got harnesses. We've also got a little aerial on there at that point. As you can see, it's all being fitted down in here. Various photo etch parts for the control levers, harnesses, things like that right the way through. You are gonna need a nose weight on this one, so just don't forget that one. Hiding it around under this one, usually that's where people try to do it, is underneath the pilot and the co-pilot's position just down in there. All right, so you can pop those in. Then you obviously got the nose wheel section going down in there and then right the 
way through, two halves coming together, tail section going on there, so we've actually got the, the guns, the various things, lumps and bumps, putting it right the way through. Bombay doors being opened up, again, this is where you've got a lot of differences down here between different markings, things like that. Pay close attention to what we were saying before, perhaps doing this a little bit of research before you go in there and start chopping things up just to make sure you've got the right ones you're going to be doing. Okay. A couple other bits just to take off, a little bit of uh, down in here, photo etch filling things, things like that to go down in there as well. So removing and putting in where is required. Okay, and then down we've got the bomb racks, bomb by doors open or closed, whichever way you're going to go with that one. We've got the engine with the wheel well sections being fitted in there again, opening up the holes where is required. Engines being fitted together, wheels being fitted together, and then obviously we've got the sort of engine nacelles being fitted onto there, and we've got the all-important uh, big old searchlight, I do believe it's on these ones, down in there being fitted onto the wing. Again, specific to B&H markings only. Gun systems, so obviously all the various turrets being fitted in uh, and put on, put together. We've got the rockets, which is fantastic on this one. Talk about gunship platform, but we have got rockets fitted to the front uh, chin section uh, on the Liberator as well. And as you can see, some nice angles showing how that's going to position right the way through. Turrets, depending on which version you're doing again, so making sure you've got those in. And then obviously we've got your aerials, engine props being fitted on there, wing section going in, so forth and so on, as you can imagine. Masking, you've got a fantastic masking sheet down in here which comes into its own on these bombers so lots of masking various ones down there on there just like that okay then we've got your call outs okay so as you can see we've got some really really nice call outs down in here for the coastal command uh, one so basically it's white with the extra dark sea gray on the top surface but again some very very nice ones right the way through on this one and just seeing if there's uh, a local one to me it doesn't tend to say where they are, just tend to be all over, but you can see some very, very nice ones right the way through. And again, some nice ones with the camo as well. If you want to do the camo, you can put all of those in straight the way through, just like that. And then carrying on, again, we've got uh, different ones down in here. So we've got the ones, uh, the Australian ones, I do believe, down in there as well. And then some of these up are here a little bit more. And again, some very nice systems again it's beautiful markings on these ones that's really nice as well with the camo work the white and you got a little bit of nose white on there as well with november markings very nice indeed stencil data as you can imagine there isn't too much on here but it does show obviously positions of aerials so you can see how they're going to be fitted on here and you've got a couple of little marks down here but again depending on which version you're going to be doing is which deco as well so just keep a little bit mindful when you're doing that one and then on the back as well you've got your prop markings and the top over wings fuel tanks things like that being fitted down on there and then obviously trestle positions as you might imagine and access ports down on the underside it looks fantastic already just straight off the bat that really is a very nice indeed we know the decals are going to be beautiful and we know they're going to be great so i'm not even going to worry about undoing these beautiful done again cartograph decals obviously edard uh, drawings down there so it's the best in both worlds they're going to be fantastic so you just know they're going to be great okay so looking at the plastic and we'll have a look at the book afterwards okay so grabbing that all important knife okay as we know this is hassock hours unfortunately they do chuck them all in one bag but there we go it's okay so as you can see very nice uh sprue if we just drop that top camera just down a little bit there we go okay as you can see, we have got very nice recessed, as you might imagine, uh, with the lifespan of this particular kit, uh, details with riveting detail and obviously panel line engraving. And then when you really cut down into here, we can see this one upside down, but you can see the details catching in the light, really very, very nice indeed. No problem with any of that. Again, we have got some little uh, ejector pin marks on the other side, which we'll have a look at in a moment, but they're not coming through. It's just you can see shadows in the plastic, but again, really very, very nice. Right the way over here, we've got the cockpit floor, things like that as well on the cabin area, bulkheads. The, you know, as I say, the cockpit floor section here, sorry, is a little bit bland, but by the time you've got seats in there, various other things, and it's painted up, you're not going to notice it too much. A little bit of light weathering, you'll be fine. Again, the actual rear... Uh, compartment doors, things like that, the nose doors, things like that. Very nicely done indeed. Bulkheads right the way through, and it's their bulkhead systems in there. Then we've got the side uh, bomb bay doors, 
these are those big lift up ones that are on the actual side of the fuselage there in there and then on the inside this is what we're talking about these uh, ejector pins are really very very close okay but the rest of it is all pretty nice no problem at all it's a little bit crude on the blind side okay but it's all should be fine no problem at all we have got some ejector pins uh, all over this though so just being a little bit mindful of those but generally I don't think you're going to notice any of those points where they are the rest of it is all very nice and actually this little bit of floor work over here is actual raised detail so, so you've got raised riveting and recessed on this particular kit let me just move that back here a little bit okay wing section so we've got top wings again they've been scratched up a little bit flying around but really very nicely done you can see all that detail popping through no problems with those at all obviously you've got nothing on the inside again the, the mold perhaps it's just showing its age a little bit this mold is now what maybe just over 10 years old something else like that it is a little bit you know not as today's standard but luckily for us the external details, the bits we worry about, are very nice indeed. A little bit of flash just on the wingtip on this one perhaps, but generally, as I say, if you look at it, you can see great, all those access ports in there. We have got raised details down in here on the control surfaces on the ailerons, and obviously we've got raised panels just down under here as well for the access panels into the actual uh, wing section itself. And again, supercharger molding points, things like that, again, very nice and good details down in all of those, no problem at all. Okay, so we've got a mixed set down in here. So actually what we've got is the engines, we've got the gun system, the cowls, things like that down on there, and even we've got some normal bombs and things down in. So as you can see, very nicely done. The engines, very standard, no problem. You have got a little bit of veining work, so that'll take a little bit of wash, and that'll be great in this scale. But generally the prop looks quite nice. Not that I think you won't even use that version of the prop, but uh, we'll have a look at that in a moment. The bombs, multi-part bombs, but generally I think that's all okay. So two sprues of that, then you're gonna get two sprues of this one as well. Nice touch on this one, we've got weighted wheels, completely separate hubs as well, which is a nice touch. Okay, then we've got the bottom part with the supercharged part of the engines going down in there. But if we zip round on here, we've got the other one. So we've just seen this sprue already. That one is just a repeat, and then we've got two of these down in here. Again, so we've got the bomb racks on the sides, and saying that great bulge tire, which is in one, Weight on wheels as well, nice touch. And then some of the smaller parts down in here for the gun uh, placements. But that wheel hub over here, it's absolutely beautifully done. And the guns actually aren't too bad. You can go along if you wanted to with a little bit of turned brass. But actually, I think that's pretty nice. No problem at all. Props have got little injection points just to help them out the mold a little bit. But generally, they're okay. So you've got two sprues of that as well. Then down into here, we've got another one just down in here so we've actually got the gear uh, on this sprue various other parts right the way through so if we come over you can see at the top here we've got the instrument panel showing through no problem at all some of the super floor areas tail wheel again good chunky tire weight on wheel as well so it's a nice flat spot on that one as you'd expect main gear legs we just saw a moment ago and then other parts right the way through and again we've got the light down on there again very nice indeed Okay, tail wheel section, spar box, things like that as well. Nice old sprue on this one, as you say. Unfortunately, we've got no option to actually have drooping if you wanted to, the actual uh, uh, elevators at all, uh, nor the, can we actually position the rudders. Um, it's a little bit of a shame on that one, but I don't think it's too much of a problem. But again, working our way up, as you can see, catching it in the light, some really nice details on those, and those all important tails and rudders some nice details on those and that big old chunky wing spar and we've got another turret down line there like that again even on the blind side we've got a little ejector pin right in the middle but that's not a problem you're going to be covering that anyway so that's actually pretty nicely done inside of the wheel wells obviously on this side and down on here some nice rib details as well pretty good indeed Okay, so technically that would be your normal B24, but this is where it's a little bit different because the guys at uh, Eddard, normally we're used to getting photo etch, you know, maybe a little bit of resin, something else like that, a seat. It's the first time I've known them to actually do a complete separate injection molding set for some of the clear parts, which we'll look at with the others, but also we get this one. So we've got the different props. So we've got the thinner uh, props on this one. We've got the searchlight, we've got the radar, we've got those uh, pylons that are gonna go on the side with the rockets, and obviously there's those rockets as well. Different guns, some other various lumps and bumps, as you might imagine, 
all over this. So again, some very nice, and actually it's quite funny because you look at the molding on this and it's a lot nicer, it's a lot finer. The riveting detail, I don't know if you can see it on this little guy down in here, absolutely very, very fine. It's a lot nicer than you've actually got on the kit. Just showing Eddard how they can produce beautiful stuff. Really very, very nice indeed. And all these little tiny lumps and bumps is what's going to give you the upgrade to the Coastal Command version one just down in here. So clear parts, let me put that there, trying to keep it a little bit safe. We have got a couple lost off here, but this is Eddard's re one of it. So we've got that giant searchlight just down in here, as you can see, but the rest of it is very, very nice, very clear, very sharp. The molding on these turrets and guns and various other things, very, very nice indeed. That's actually fantastic. Nice, very, very nice indeed. Some very sharp details as well on these actual sides of the turrets. Again, beautifully done, very good quality. Okay, and then we'll have a look at the kit ones. Now the kit ones, obviously, a lot of these turrets you're gonna be replacing across, but the main parts, and obviously down in here, if you haven't noticed, you do get the nose section. Okay, so we've got a few poly caps, no sections, things like that in here. Right, sure. Get rid of that. So just down in there, we've got poly caps, and then obviously you can see front end if you haven't realized but the front end is clear parts just for the windows to make it a little bit easier. But again, on the close up, as you can see doesn't look too bad. Obviously you're already looking through the windows, that all looks very nice, but generally if you were doing the other versions in here, you've got very, very front end. So obviously our version we're doing here has got no nose turret, so you're going to be using this one, not this one, but you have got the options in the kit. So if you did want to mess around with it a little bit, you could probably do all the different versions. Again, very clean, very sharp, no problems with any of those. Nice protection on those. I know we're not going to be using those, but very good indeed. Okay, so that would be a fantastic kit, but it doesn't quite stop there because Eddard have done various different things, but also they've done this, which is a lovely little book. So what I'm gonna do very carefully, because to be honest, this isn't my kit, um, is just try and get in here without destroying it. So we're just going to try and peel this off. In the bottom, we have a proper square bound book. Okay, really nice book. As you can see, we just need that top camera out just a little bit so you can get it all in there. Okay. So we have Liberator. This is obviously the uh, Mark III and the Mark V. Coastal Command book, all about it. And then down in here, you can see, I don't want to break the spine, so I'm not going to pull this apart, but we have got some great pictures. Obviously, we've got maps in here showing exactly how far it goes. But again, this is where it's beautiful book on this one because it's got fantastic references showing them in place. And obviously, all that detailed information you're going to need. Again, showing those rocket pods or packs on the sides. The crews. Some really, really nice photos beautifully researched right the way through and again this is going to be an absolute godsend for doing the your build as you're making your way through with your references right the way over these there's that huge light on the side and then we've got the different ones talking about the crews their attack methods as you can see, the ones that we've got in the kit here, fully referenced as well, showing them in real life as well as on, and the crews that flew them. Obviously their attack patterns as well. Beautiful, beautiful book. Really very nice indeed. And then some of the other ones from right way around the war world during the war. Again, fantastic, great, great reference as you can tell. And there we go. So it looks like Eddard have done it again. They've taken 
a really, really good kit. Chucked everything at it to turn it into absolutely a stunning kit. So if you were ever a fan of the Liberator, and let's face it, Coastal Command one does get overlooked a lot, then this is definitely a must have kit. It's also available, to be honest with you, Oh, I'll just bring this up because I can't remember what it was. It's all of also available on the PM site as well if you wanted to get it down in there. And it's available with us at £78. So if you want to head over to there, the link is down below after the review as well. But I have to say, it is a must. Unfortunately, I haven't got one. So I'm going to have to get one on order and get one myself because it is definitely a must for your stash. Mm -hmm.